I don't know. Dr. Roseburg? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Thank you. We're, we're, we're going to let you. I think we're all here. Is everybody online? Everybody's ready? <laughs> Dr. Rose it's all you. Okay. I now call the um, our Board of Education meeting to order. At this time, we would like to offer up the opportunity to call for nominations for board chair. I'd like to nominate Karen Cobb as board chair. Okay. Can we call for a vote for chair? How does each board member vote? We'll start with you, Miss Miss Clow. I vote yes. <laughs> Miss Dunbar. Yes. Miss Spencer. Yes. Ms. Liverman? Yes. And Mr. Scripture? No. Okay, well, the vote passes. Ms. Clow is now our board chair. Thank you. I now will open elections for the vice chairperson. Make a motion to nominate Dr. Walker, vice chair. Ms. Jones made a motion to nominate Ms. Dunbar for vice chair. Are there any other nominations? Here, and then we'll close nominations. How do you vote, Ms. Dunbar? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Gibbs? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Lederman? Yes. How do you vote, Mr. Scripture? No. And I vote yes. Ms. Dunbar has been elected as vice chair. <coughs> our next item on our agenda is the approval of the personnel agenda and the recommendation of the board approved personnel agenda as presented. I make a motion to accept the personnel agenda as presented. Ms. Gibbs made a motion to approve the personnel agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? And that is with an employee who is at the current background check. That is correct. But there is no current background check on file with our school system, correct? Our paperwork says Hearing no discussion, you vote, Mr. Scripture? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Can you clarify what says? Yes. Just for the public. Yes. Linda, it's fairly gone, but. We had a person that was interviewed uh, on the Thursday or Friday. They get a chance to get the background check back yet. So we should be back in a day or so. So we are going to approve her to face that uh, background check coming in. If the background check is not good, we have not done. Is there any other discussion? Yeah, there's some questions. We will follow up with the board regardless of whether the background check is um, sufficient or not. Correct, Dr. Rosebrook? Yes. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussion? 
Ms. Um, Gibbs has made a motion to approve the personnel agenda as presented. How do you vote, Mr. Scripture? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Liverman? Yes. How do you vote, Mrs. Gibbs? Yes. How do you vote, Mrs. Dunbar? Yes. And I vote yes. The personnel agenda is approved. The next item is our approval of minutes from the um, February 6th board meeting. There were a chance to read. Were there some corrections? Those were for closed session. I would like to make a motion to table that because they were not in my package. She has to go early. So I like an option to read it. Ms. Loverman has made a motion to table four minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote, Mr. Scripture? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Loverman? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Gibbs? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Ms. Dunbar? And I vote yes. Approval minutes is the table. The next item is our consent agenda. <laughs> Tonight on the consent agenda, we have an MOA, a memorandum of understanding between the Martin Terrell Washington District Health Department and Terrell County Schools. <laughs> Ms. Dunbar has made a motion to approve the consent agenda with the <coughs> contract with Mark Carroll Washington District Health Department. Is there any discuss discussion? Is that the only item on the consent agenda? It is, so we really don't have to have a discussion. How do you vote, Mr. Scripture? Yes. How do you vote, Mrs. Yes. How do you vote, Mrs. Um, Gibbs? Yes. How do you vote, Mrs. Dunbar? Yes. And I vote yes, the consent agenda is approved. Dr. Roseburg, is there a reason to reorder the agenda tonight? No, there's no reason to reorder. Thank you. Next up is our public forum. This is a reminder that the purpose of the public forum is to afford the public opportunity to address the board in three minutes on matters related to policy or general concern. The board will listen and may ask questions to try to understand the matter being presented. As a general rule, the board delays discussion and or decision until a later time. But this is the only time on an agenda that the audience may participate in the board's meeting. If any person wishes to address the board, she or he should make it known at this time. Please remember that no person addressing the board may refer to a student or employee by name if they are protected by law from such. It may only be discussed in closed session as governed by board policy and commonly recognized practice. There are no names on our public forum list, but is there anyone in the audience tonight who would address, like to address the board publicly? Hearing that, we will go on to combinations, awards, and presentations. I'm not sure if there is any, Dr. Roseburg. Okay. Okay, then we'll go on to the in-service and instructional program. And first off, this is Brianna Williams with student parking and athletics. Good evening. Good evening. People did start with the metal touch for um is that one the agenda? So <laughs> Okay, this is brief. Um, Mr. Doug Patrick and Mr. Austin Price are working on. Repainting, we're not repainting, but restriping the parking lot with numbered spaces. 
so that we can account for all of the students and staff that are supposed to be on our campus to create a more safe and orderly environment and also to know which vehicles belong to us and which may belong to community people. And so we know who's on our campus at all times that are students or staff employees. Officer Franks has ordered the decals for parking and he has them so that there are for TBS, CHS, CMS, the bus garage, maintenance facilities, and they're all numbered spaces. Um, we are recommending a $20 per year parking fee um, or $10 per semester. We realize that there's financial hardship for a lot of our students. Um, we also realize that driving and parking on campus is a privilege in our rights since we do have bus transportation. Um, it also creates some accountability for the students when they know that they have an assigned parking space with an assigned number and an assigned tag. Um, that way, Officer Franks and administration, particularly at the high school level, when we are on campus and we're doing our checks in the parking lot, also teachers that are on duty in those areas, because we do have students coming and going multiple times during the day, um, whether they're late ends or early outs or whether they're here for college courses, we know which students are supposed to be on campus and what they drive and what they're supposed to be driving and that visible Columbia High School tag is on their rear year. Um, the $10 per semester, a lot of our kids will get the license, you know, say in October um, or December, then they shouldn't have to pay for the full year. They can just pay for the semester and get the semester for the next term. Um, the technology fee, which is standard across the district, is for the phone book and the charger. That's $20. We're not proposing a change for that. And then the athletic fee would be $30 per sport for participation to support the overall athletic program. We know how costly athletics is for students. Um, there's a lot of needs that come up for students throughout the year, and student services are able to meet that need. Administrators, teachers are able to meet that need. But we did ask for an athletic fee for each student and family participating in this account would be used to help supplement the needs of the athletic program. Um, it's very old school. We got a lot of old facilities. Um, we need a lot of things painted, repurposed, rebuilt, fixed, and we're going to have money to do that. So this also gives a little bit higher accountability for the student and the parents that they can't just, you know, come onto a team when they want to or quit or not attend practice. It kind of gives them a higher stake in the game for participation, much like if they're on a rec team or a summer travel team. Um, they play two sports per year. They drive to school both semesters and, and they pay the technology fee. That will be $100. Now, potential implications for our students is if they don't pay this fee at the end of their freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, it continues to rack up and they cannot see their deployment until all fees are paid. Um, one thing I would like to do since I could from principal is have them eliminate that debt every year. So maybe restrict them from participating in some things during the school year. That would be field trips and extracurricular until some of those fees are paid. Um, we did have some seniors this year that owed technology fees going back to middle school. And that's a long time, six years of not paying technology fees. And by the time it gets to be their senior year, it can be a lot of money. So. Any questions? How much did the decals for purchase cost? Um, I do not know specifically. I, I would guess two to three dollars a piece. Um, they are the nice decals with the logos on them, the shiny ones that hold up and not just the paper ones. And what exactly are we going to do with the $20 a year that we collect from our kids? I would say restrike in the parking lot, use for connected communication. Certainly, there's no funds for that. Um, going into general funds. I thought the safety grant paid for restrike. That I can't answer. Yes, the, the safety grant did um, right pay for that, but we have to have a plan for sustainability after the safety grant ends of how we can continue to maintain safety, security, and beautification of our campuses. I know we need some more signage. There needs to be some more signage um, when visitors are on our campus in different places, um, and that could there'd be a cost to curb with that. <laughs> An alternative 
to this recommendation, um, we looked into several schools in our region, and several schools in our region um, charge a student fee per grade level, and it starts with a lower fee in ninth and tenth grade, and it moves to a higher fee in eleventh and twelfth grade. Um, so that is an alternative. Um, I'm still waiting for a couple of districts to contact me back. That that is one thing that several schools do in our region. How? For student parking in the parking lot and the construction that's getting ready to commence over that over there. How are we going to be short spaces? Are we going to run out of spaces? Like as that progresses, like I don't know what the long term of that because there's currently I don't know how many spots are over there, but some of it's covered up by construction materials at this time. Yeah. I I can't answer that. Mm -hmm. I would not, I don't think we're in jeopardy of not having enough spaces at this time. Hopefully that would be an issue in the future as we get more of our students back. How many students currently drive the campus? That's, that's also a hard question to answer because they come and go depending on when their college classes are and their internships and their work schedules and if they're 11th grade or 12th grade and if they're leaving and going to the daycares and um i would say half of each grade level so maybe 40 if i had to guess how many parking spots do we have total on the high school campus oh do you know that oh. Uh, Ms. Frank still believes that the number of uh, spaces in the back parking lot would be all that we need for student parking. What if the students decide to park on the street? They would decide to park on the street. So that was my next question. If we're talking about trying to bring students back, but yet we're, we're adding fees for parking and then we're adding fees for athletics. Is this, do you really think this is going to bring students back by adding additional fees? I mean, I think $30 is supposed to kill our athletic program. I think we're going to be done with athletics. I mean, and that's all that keeps some of our kids there. Um, our most at risk kids are now they're going to have to pay for it, pay to play. And that's what separates us from travel ball. I mean, not all kids can afford to, to pay to play. Uh, and I think these fees, I think, I understand the technology fee because that's a, that's a needed item that, you know, there's got to be some skin in the game that's going to be destroyed. But I, I, I think these other fees, I, don't, I just, I think we need to find some other way. I mean, we're, we're hiring for position after position, but yet we're going to try to get more money out of our kids. I just, I don't think that's the way to do it. it might, that's just my thoughts. My biggest concern is that this is July, so we'll start in August. I understand a lot of other school districts do charge a fee for students to park. Uh, I understand that there be, like you said, the alternative of a grade level fee. But knowing this community, living in this community, I would just ask, like, how many, how many of our staff, admins, superintendents, how many home visits have we had? Do we understand the hardship that it can be? I mean, to some people, twenty dollars might not be a big thing, but it is. It would separate students, or thirty dollars separate students from playing our sports. So with Terrell County not having uh, other alternatives for students after school, I do think our sports program is is helps our students get into things that they shouldn't be getting. Not getting to things that they should. Well, we have so <laughs> parent, we have a parent that has two kids playing basketball. We're talking sixty dollars plus the expense. Uh, of, what, if, what if the kids want to play football, basketball, baseball? Plus the other expense of being. So I'm just $80 a year. Yeah. Plus parking is $200 additional dollars that family's got to pull out. Or the kids don't get to drive to school, play sports. Have we done an analysis of our gate receipts and how we use that money for funding athletics? Sorry, I don't get it. 
um, have we done a cost analysis of how of our ticket? Are we going in depth and look at the athletics and what we collect? I have not. Okay. Is there any way that we could spend this current year doing that while we entertain these athletic fees and doing a study on what we're proposing? I mean, I concur with what everybody says here. Um, I'm personally not in favor of parking fees because I think our students park on the streets and that's going to cause community relation issues because we have a lack of parking already in the town of Columbia, especially mm -hmm. on the court dates and things like that. So I don't know how everybody else feels like agree with Mr. Stricture and Ms. Dunbar and Ms. Lillman and everything they've said. But I also would like to see if we can spend some time with the study and the athletic fees and exactly what we're talking about. Now, I don't have a problem. I think the decals are great. I think that, that you know, the vehicle should be there. I think you can you can find a way to issue, you know, one decal for a student. I think it's the, the assigned parking places. Yeah, it's great. I think it's a great idea because you know whose vehicle is where. I think that's great. But I, I think I think we're going to put unneeded stress and create unneeded hardship with, with a parking fee, in, in my opinion. I mean, some of these kids are having to leave to go to work and have a penalize for for doing that, so I think you know their families need that that extra income. Uh, I, I have no problem with the security issues behind the assignment. I don't think the twenty dollars is going. I don't think that's going to help that. I think it's going to make it worse. I do think we should know who is on campus and who shouldn't. I'm already tell. I 100 agree that. Yeah, that I think, I think we got to do better now. I mean, sometimes we don't even know when they're in the building. But I don't think it's fair for us to. We're right at 30 days to put additional fees on our students without without looking at other alternatives. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is utilizing parking decals. And I think this room is going in for office pranks. <laughs> Get this way, guys. Don't mind. A little better than short. Um, right. NC School Safety Grant Sustainability Plan implements a student and staff parking safety process. Student parking lot areas currently being restriped and numbered by Mr. Patrick and his team. Mr. Patrick has already met with Officer Franks about numbering sequences of the spaces. Officer Franks has drafted a student and staff application packet that pretty much just has basic information as um, the car made model, um, the color and the license plate. Dr. Roseboro, myself, have given final approval. It includes parking space agreement, stipulations on rules and policy, registration information, parking fee, and letters to the home of parents or guardians. It's also going to be included in all the initial. Um, paperwork that we get out to students at the end. And yeah, that's going to go through you and Dr. Roseboro prior to going home to parents, correct? Correct. Correct. Parking agreement letter contained in the student parking packet should be sent home to protect student drivers before school starts. Driving students should come to CHS before school starts to purchase their parking decal or to purchase parking permit that is in house. Um, and this is only for licensed drivers, licensed insured drivers that currently have a license and can drive to school, of course. Student parking decals can be purchased, and that uh, we just discussed, check the money orders are payable to school guys. Do we, do we currently check license insurance for our students that drive? We have several students that chose to drive this year that were not licensed drivers off through our school campus that I dealt with administratively. So do we check them all? We, I will make sure that Anytime I reveal that that's the case, that those students don't receive the parking decal. That's probably a good idea. Excellent. SRA the credit school will monitor the parking lot for student compliance. Any violations or issues will be dealt with in house. Uh, central office and bus garage will be given their parking decals and office supervisors that way when people from other sites on our campus will know that hey look that was on campus because we had this truck um bus garage is on campus and that way we know who our folks are that may or may not have a student or a chs decal 
Um, the CHS SRO will maintain a file for Columbia Middle and High School. SRO for Terrell Elementary will be responsible for maintaining a file and issuing parking details for that location. Staff will fill out a parking permit and there'll be no charge for that. Okay, any questions for the parking detail? And then metal detector pro project, um, there's been a purchase and we've actually received those metal detectors. We're implementing a metal detection safety process with the NC School Safety Grant. Superintendent will recommend the metal detector use on school property to the TCS Board of Education through the board uh, policy. Parent and guardian notification letters will be sent at the beginning of each school year. SRO Franks will arrange face-to-face -face training with the delegated staff members how to use the metal detectors before the school year starts. CMS and CHS will leave the metal detectors at the main entrance during school hours. TES will use the detectors during events and during other times that school intros deem necessary. Principal superintendent will set a date when a full screening will occur. And this will not happen every day, but this will happen when we feel like it's necessary and it may be at random. And we will screen everybody on campus as they go through. We're also going to have the metal detectors set up for ball games. include all staff? Yes. And ball games, particularly basketball, where we have large gatherings of people. SRA Franks and Lewis must be a part of that meeting to ensure everything is set up and used correctly. And part, part of the protocol is when they go through the metal detector, the large one, and it goes off, what happens? Where they put their things or in their lawn, and he will go through that protocol and training with delegated staff members. So our staff will be trained on how to understand. And they'll be on duty at the sporting events as well. The, the trained staff yeah. Who were those trained staff be? We have not identified them yet. But it will likely be high profile staff members that are on campus a lot, i.e. the athletic director, myself, um, people that have a lot of responsibilities that are on campus regularly and often. So we could have an athletic director who could potentially be uh, charged with searching kids because of the metal detector went off. That he won't be doing a full search. That would be, I mean, like a search for search and seizure would be administrative only. And the only time law enforcement does it is he feels like there's a weapon or a safety issue. He would call over an administrator for, for Terrell County and he would do the search if there was an issue. Their plan would happen to be technology, but and there's lots of training and things like that. We just had an answer that whether it was another administrator on campus who would do it then. There is a plan, um, and that plan we work out amongst ourselves with administrators and district level staff. Is this based on here with the board, I I'll be glad to share that with the board. Yeah, um, we I'm not now, but I'll be glad to in the future. Yeah, Whenever we have, we, we have to go through our our national safety protocol training on July 24th. India, will you make sure that the board um, gets a copy and invite it to the national protocol training. Once the national protocol training for set school safety is completed, then the safety team will reassemble, which was made up of school administrators and district staff, as Ms. Uh, Williams just stated. And we're going to go back through our draft copy um, of the procedures and processes and then review that with the board. Dr. Uh, Rosemary, you said July 24th. Yes, July 24th is our national uh, school safety training day. Is that virtual, in person? What does that look like? It is in person, and we also have surrounding school districts and law enforcement that will be joining us um, in our district. And that was part of our um, usage of our funds with the North Carolina School Safety Grant is that we will be hosting this for the Northeast region on July 24th. So all day, what times? Andy, I believe is correct me if the time isn't it from nine to three. Okay. I have nine, nine to four. Three. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So once we go through that protocol training, we're gonna we have to add those pieces into our safety uh, plan training manual, and the metal detector project will have a section within the school safety plan. And there will be something for when there are no administrators. 
Yes, there is a protocol when there when there are no administrators, there will be additional. Um, the metal detectors have to be ran by our SROs. Uh, they have to be on site when that when that happens. So we have to ensure that we involve law enforcement in that process or our off duty officers that we hire for our athletic events or um, any other events that we may host. So law enforcement has to be involved in our protocol for when an administrator is not on site, that dedicated uh, personnel will be able to supervise that. Thank you. Sorry. Next up is uh, school plants, equipment, and fiscal affairs. A financial report from Ms. Carolyn This is the summer of where we ended the year. Uh, as of June 30th, after I did my final adjustments, um, State Public School Fund, we used 96% of our funds were spent in local, 96.96. .96. Uh, federal grants, we have some to carry over, so about half of those, a little over half were spent. Capital outlay, we have some major projects that we're working on. And so uh, where we ended that, we have some a remaining balance going into the new year. So about 24% was spent on attrition of that budget. We have 93% and then other specific revenue, which is kind of a catch-all for um, just various grants. We spent about half of that. And those were the grants that had to be zeroed at the end of the year. Everything else was carried forward. Okay. So about 96% of our funds budget was spent. And then this is just a, the next slide um, is to break down by per object code of how we spent money. And so um, the same percentage, most of this is spent in salary and benefits and in purchase services. And then, can I ask a question? Sure. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So um, on this particular page, I just wanted to call out the transfers. Transfers are our fund balance appropriate. And so we'll, we'll look at those when we get to the budget amendments. Um, we are required to give child nutrition $45,000 out of state funds every year. So that's included in there. Any other transfers would be fund balance and it's appropriate. And, and can you explain just for the public for people what, what, what constitutes a transfer? When you have, we spend more money than we actually take in, we have to use our fund balance. And that is the, ba the balance that's in the cash, cash is in the bank. And we're going to talk about that in a minute when we get to the balance sheet. Okay. All right. So the next one, okay, okay we had one um, a lot in revision that was late in the in the year. Even though that says grant year 2021, it was actually made in this year. Money that was left over a few years ago, they gave us additional funds. Um, so not a lot, but that was for our summer program. The next page. Okay. So um, you all have the final budget amendments for the year um, that were on, they were going to be presented for approval. This is a summary of the amendments we've made during the year. Remember, we started out with a, an initial budget, kind of a continuation budget. And we came back in October once we got all the money dropped down and all the federal did amendment to, to revise that. Then we had amendments in March and then the final amendments in, in uh, June. That we had. Right, so this is, this is our balance sheet as of June 30th. It's unaudited, meaning there are final adjustments that the auditors made for pension. You know, if there's any payables, I'll have the next few weeks. Well, I think actually I have it since August. 
to determine if there were any bills from last year that haven't been paid and we can report a payable. But right now, um, first line is capture the bank and is literally our bank accounts for all of the school, the district funds. The cash, NC Cash Management Trust Fund, um, we have a little small town that has, town nutrition has some money in there, it's been in there for a long time uh, for equipment. And that little bit, that, that last column is supposed to be other specific revenue. I'm going to have to talk to that column on. But that is the money that's left with an abatement donation. It's been sitting there. It's not getting a lot of interest, but that's what that is. Um, and then after we um, we have flex cards, you know, we make an obligation as the district to um, you know, provide flexible Ameriflex cards to our staff. And so when we sign that contract, everybody signs up in March, uh, in May, end of May, we have an obligation based on the number of people who signed up and the dollar amount. And so as the year goes along, we collect money through payroll, we pay the bill, and then that balance is what we got left sitting there um, in that account that can be used to pay benefits for employees. And that changes every month. Every time you use a user's card, it gets changed. Um, if you look down below in the payables area, um, we have flex card balance. That's how much we had at the end of June. Um, we have to collect for July and for August. And then the plan starts over again in September. We'll start Right. And then we have bills that we're sitting out there, electric bills. We can't have any uh, payables in federal and, and state. The money comes in, money's got to go out. If, it does, if we get too much, we draw too much down, I've got to revert it. So we do that every month. That's like a daily thing that we check. Um, and then we have, there are some adjustments at the end of the year. Child nutrition records are payable for a free vacation. This balance is sitting here is what was owed to employees at the end of last year. So that'll change. All right, so as we were talking about earlier, revenues coming in, revenues and expenditures going out. If we spend more than what we take in, we're going to have to use fund balance. And if you look at net gain and loss um, next to the bottom line, every fund spent more money than they took in during the year. So there are, when you look at the budget amendments, fund balance appropriation, where we took cash, available cash to pay those. Um, local came out on the plus side because I claimed in the direct cost for administration of the federal grants and that dumped into local. And so we ended up having $24,000 plus. And I'm sure that will be obligated in the next couple of months you know, as we're going forward up through the summer before we start school again. Uh, capital outlay, you know about that. That is uh, the money that we set aside for learning lab <clears throat> and the other capital projects, child nutrition, child nutrition, let's get that one done. And then we run, and then other specific revenue uh, is the last one. And we had some, um, Recruiting fees and things that we didn't have revenue coming in, we could use fund balance to pay for those. Um, staff appreciation, staff recognition, end of year banquet, those kinds of things. We use those funds. Okay, so going back to child nutrition. Um, this year, um, the CEP plan ended last year. That, per that percentage of reimbursement went down. We could not use could not claim the COSIN charter on our monthly claim reimbursement with USDA. So the way that was funded is that we actually charge the COSIN for catered breakfast and catered lunches. The cost per um, plate was higher than the amount of revenue that we got from the So we actually had a loss. Um, the other thing that happened is the reimbursement rates, because we came off the CEP plan, the reimbursement rate per plate went down. Our average cost per meal is like $7.65 for, for our expenses. Um, 
part of that increase was the cost of food. <laughs> so all of that went up. I, I checked and it's about 10% more in the cost of food this year as compared to last year. We had a slight increase in salaries, maybe 2.4%, but not anything really significant. It's just the normal cost of people's raises so or what the cost of that But the biggest thing was the loss of revenue that we had to have we had to use fund balance to uh, for our nutrition to come out even this year. And we do have a plan, Myra has um, just put in preliminary numbers. Our reimbursement rate was like 69% last year. She's expected it to be 94% this year. So that revenue should be back up. Um, we are not right now, as of right now, not um, contracting with the person to provide meat. So that was in that cost will come. So that looks a little bit better, you know, as far as you know, estimating where we're going for next year. Um, the good thing about if there is a good thing about losing money, Myra has been on um, for the last two or three years because of the increased reimbursement rates, had to have an actual plan every quarter of how she was going to spend her money with the USDA. You have a quarter where I have to be, excuse me. <clears throat> and there's always, we only can have three months of revenue or cash on hand for child nutrition. And she's always been like six, seven, or eight months. And so, Every she would have to provide a plan. Or how are you going to do this? And you know, if you're going to buy equipment, we're going to increase people's salaries, whatever we're going to do, and provide that quarterly basis to um, follow. Okay. So when I did the end of the year plan, just looking at those numbers, <coughs> 0.9 percentage of a month um, over in her cash is about eighty four hundred dollars. So there is a a good side to that is just balancing that cash on the way we need to be. Okay. Any questions about that? And this is very broad strokes. There's a lot of detail and all about, you know, if you want to dig into it, we can do it later. Not <laughs> I, I can remember a lot of no, stuff, just, but I just, just know. Just get into the details. It's a good that was a joke. I've been in it for uh, a few months now. Okay, so any questions about that? But, all right. So you'll get a you'll get the um, actual audit version after the audit. Uh, um, we've already been in the process of providing the audit information. We've got another check just with about six pieces of not individual pieces, but uh, categories of information that are audited. And once we get that, we will audit adjustments. So there's no questions about that. Um, you do, I don't have the budget amendments up there, but you do have that for approval. And um, <coughs> they were done June 30th. So the effective date you could you know, be as of the end of that, that last day of the year to get our budget in line with what we actually spent. We have a copy of the the resolution, along with the detail of um, purpose codes that changed. If you have any questions about that, I'll be glad to answer them. Okay. Does anyone have any questions from the Simmons? I have a lot of question that is just out of curiosity. Um, I know just in the educational realm, it really drive on like using data to drive instruction. My question would be, how are admin know what their buildings need because they're in it every day? How do they obtain, what's the process for them to get the funds that they need to be able to directly impact students? Like, what does that look like for our district? As far as budget planning for the year, um, we have a, a number of tools that we're using. Um, so the, the, we start with federal programs. They have a planning template that Dr. Rosebrook has provided to them. Um, we estimated the number of positions that are allotted, and that information can be given to them. 
And so um, we've been planning all along, probably since the first of the year, how to get what positions are out there. It's hard to do without money, a dollar to be impacted. And so we're, that's what we're doing right now. We, we know more when we get into the actual initial allotments when they drop. Um, that's supposed to be after July the 24th. Uh, we don't have any kind of planning allotments right now. Uh, the last I heard, there was a proposal in the General Assembly to allocate funds in a bucket, a one lump sum bucket. And then we would have to, as a district, decide how those funds are going to be allocated. When we do it by the program codes, you know, that PRC code, then we know we've got positions like we can have a 20, we've got, to, we estimate 22 teachers. And so it doesn't matter how much those teachers are, that we put in that allotment cost, because it's going to be paid for. Um, the same thing is true with like the psychologists. Guidance and non instructional support, all of those are positions that are allocated and CTU exhibit. The principals know that. They know what that estimated planning number is, and then we're building it from there. Um, there's a lot of, of um, allocations and allotments that are dollar based based on ADM. Uh, we know that DPI is projecting us at 488 this year. 488 students. We were projected last year at 536. So we know we're going to have funds set based on that. Um, so we can we have we have a rough estimate. We know how many students are projecting. We have that documented. Okay. So I know that that like our our student allotment is going down. So obviously that means our funds are going down. I, I guess my question is more so not for positions, I'm talking about direct instruction, direct supplemental, PBIS, things like that that go directly to the students. Like what does so that look like? We don't we don't know that number yet because staffing has got to come first. And so uh, you know as we're going through that, we've got to get the staff situated. Then when we have the allotments, then we will know what the, the dollar amounts are going to be. So as we know we have to pay support staff, custodians, we know we have to pay for maintenance, all of that. We have to demonstrate all of that has to be mapped out first. Then we look at what dollars are left. And that's what I'm in the process of doing now, is taking all those planning documents, putting it in a form that I can identify the salaries and the benefits that go along with it, and then we then we'll know what's left. So as of right now, so we're planning it out every time Dr. Trevor, Ms. Richards, or Ms. Williams needs something say hey i have to have xyz what does that process look like they go to dr rosemary and then go to you or they do they but will at, they know in a month at, i have this amount of funds. at this point right now we are on a continuation budget we cannot do new purchases all we can do we cannot do anything non-referring so there's no um, there's no emergency that i can meet that we don't have available funds for now we have carryover with federal funds because those grants don't expire until September 30th. So we have a little window there that covers the summer months. Federal grants don't drop until October 1. So if we don't, if we don't plan a carryover, we're not going to have funds. So, so that's where we are now. So when we look in that main, uh, that main, that first uh, slide where I said there, you know, we have federal money that's carrying over. Those are persons with specific things that we use during the summer. But, yeah. but in general, if the if the budget was a line, if the budget was a line and it was all mapped out and we had everything in there, but there was something that wasn't planned for, then the, the process would be the principals would make a request to the superintendent. And then I would work with her to see if there were funds available. So planning is the key because if you get into the middle of the year and you forgot something huge, if there's no money, then it may be something happening with that. Yeah, I'm just thinking about like, I'm sure we have some preliminary scores from our testing or at least have an idea. Let's say 
I don't know, like if we really need to boost our science, fifth grade, whatever. Like I want our principals, I know that they can talk to Dr. Roseburg, but I, I'm really an advocate of our schools knowing the funds and be able to get to the funds and spending it because that's really what's going to move the needle. They, and they will have, when the budget is finished, they already have access to link, have access to put spreadsheets. Um, Linda Duncan push budgets, budgets out to them. But those are that moment in time. And if they if they utilize the cook spreadsheets that we have in link, they can go in there at any time because as we are entering information in, it's money that's pulled down or expenditures that are that go out, that data is, is updated in real time. So they can look at that at any time. And the bookkeepers at the school have access to that too, and they know that the directors have access to that. Um, so it, once we get all mapped out, the, the information is there. Okay. So Ms. Simmons, I, I wanted to add just to make sure that the board knows that this is the first year that our principals have engaged in need-based budgeting. Um, and so because we have a new group of principals, Ms. Bridgers is really the, the only seasoned um principal who kind of understands the the purpose codes and the purpose that she has to spend her dollars for which they were intended and then also it has to be aligned if you're using federal dollars whatever you even if you just spend on instructional supplies and materials those funds have to be justified in alignment to the every student exceeds act as well as your school improvement plan so we have had to do a lot of work on needs-based budgeting, starting with the rewriting school improvement plans based off of what our data says is needed for our students. And then working off of 75% of your budget. So we looked at, okay, what was it that we spent? What was the total budget before? And let's create a demo budget of 75%. And then from there, they build a budget based off of 75%. So I would say that out of after the salaries and the staffing has been determined, as Ms. Simmons has described for you, our principals then have to work within their budget of what funds have been allotted for supplies and materials. And with federal dollars, certain supplies and what you may think of as supplies and materials, the federal government does not think of those things as supplies and materials. But they have a general fund that they can pull some additional, um, they can buy additional supplies and materials that are outside of that scope uh, from as well. So uh, Ms. Simmons and Ms. Leisure has done a really good job of providing some in-service um, opportunities to the staff on Link, um, which is our software system that we use. And then um, also we invited our principals to the NASBO. Isn't that correct, Ms. Simmons? The NASBO or the for the school administrators conference on budgeting so that they understand how to access their funds. But then also they're working within those parameters. So we've had to do a lot of training on needs-based budgeting and then how to access your funds and all the various pots of funds that they can pull from. Um, so with the lean team, we're going to have to do more training with our school-based finance officers to be sure that the principal needs are met in a timely manner. Because what's happening is they're bypassing the school finance officer and they go straight to the district finance officer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carolyn. There's a recommendation that we approve the budget amendments number 12 to 17. So this is the FARS mayor um, motion to approve the budget amendments uh, 12 through 17. Is there any discussion? Okay. 
Carry none. How do you vote, Mr. Scripture? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Liverman? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Gibbs? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Dunbar? And I vote yes. The budget amendments are approved. Thank you, Ms. Karen. There, um, I did put one little thing in there about where we are on the um, the budget process for next year. And this was the information that was sent down to us from the guy. We talked about it briefly about never even not, not recurring. It's been we've got going forward. And then um, the other thing is that they managed made it really plain that there are no salary increases until the budget is in, 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 as approved. And so even as far as steps, they're going to revise the schedule, but not everybody down um, to where they're supposed to be, even though they might move up on the step on their license, they're going to be paid at the previous step. So no salary increases or anything until the budget, final budget is approved by the state. And so we're going to, we're going to follow that process and um, once we have a budget, then we'll bring that to you. Ms. Bowen, the only other question that I have from the budget that I've written down is where we start our best served funds because they have to be spent by or at least allocated by September, correct? Okay, all the, all of the ESSER funds that were that had to be spent by September of 2023 have been spent. Okay. So the only thing that we have left are the uh, it's 181 and I like the 180 range, and that will be September of 2023. Have a plan for that. Are there any other questions? Thank you so much. Next up is our transportation update with Mr. Ronnie Hunter. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, Start off, but before we get to this presentation, just let y'all know where we stand with our buses. Um, as y'all know, I've got a helper or a gentleman to work with me this evening or with me or however we want to call it. Um, he's doing a wonderful job. He is learning learning a lot. Uh, and the buses are improving. But definitely, you can, I mean, I, you can see it. I can see it. So, I mean, that's a plus. So we, we're going in the right direction with those. Um, also, just let y'all know, I know we, we said to talk about it a little bit last year, this coming year, school year. I know we're, I, just said that. I feel like we're going to get at least five new buses, possibly six. Depends on if they're going to let me get one of them out of, out of a status that is in right now. I've been working on trying to get it out. Uh, it's actually like they put it in park status with the bus park that we don't use it for a spare. We've been using the bus every day. so. I'm still arguing with DPI. So I'm trying to get that one replaced. We may get six new ones. So just coming here. Anyway, just kind of, I want to throw that out and let y'all know where we were standing as far as that goes. Um, we're going to start on this presentation um, five, six months ago. I had the time flies. The old, my, my mom was always told me, the older you get, the faster you go. So I'm saying five or six months ago. Uh, we discussed the needs with y'all as far as the county vehicle. Um, the one that we have, uh, it's got some age on, it's got quite a few miles on, it's got several, one major issue, uh, several other issues. Um, and, and this is just a couple of the things that we that I know of. Um, it's old, it's high mileage, the, the air condition does not, does not work properly, um, and the engine has not. Uh, once it gets on, it's you can hear the bottom end of the motor stop knocking, and it's like I told you before. I wouldn't send my wife on nowhere um, and feel comfortable about it. So and that's kind of where we're at with what we've got. So we've been in the process of trying to get some some quotes from different dealerships on different vehicles, um, and we, I've got sir, I had several, and what I've done, I compiled the. All of them down and, and picked the two cheapest ones. And I, that sounds cheap, but I did. I, I got the list, let, let's, let's say the less expensive, um, and sent them. And the next next slide, I think, is going to show y'all what we're actually looking at. Um, and Miss India got us a picture 
so that's and that's actually the color of this vehicle that we're looking at if um, if we go with this one or if we can decide on whatever but anyway this is the information on this was the chevrolet equinox um it only said it sets five so it's two in the front and then three across the back seats um you can see the miles per gallon is 26 and 31. it's got the 1.5 liter turbo engine which is a four cylinder and it has a automatic transmission in it i didn't think we need to get nothing with a manual I don't know who can drive manual. I thought we'd, we'd better leave the manual alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's our, our price is 250824. Um that price is just so y'all know it, that price is a little bit misleading. That was the price for the vehicle. Um, and I made a note on a couple. We still have to buy the tags and the taxes. And we have to do all that through the DMV ourselves because the dealerships that we're dealing with, they don't do a permanent tax and we get permanent tax. So that's something that we're going to have to do in the DMV office ourselves. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. I'm, I'm guessing and, and just talking to them somewhere around a thousand dollars, let them hope 1200 or something like that. Um, these are not off state contracts. No, actually, on state contract. Um, I called the dealership that's on state contract and he will not, he won't, he won't not answer. So, and he leaves on, on the voicemail and says, best way to contact me is email. So I emailed him. He emailed me right back and I told him who it was, what we were looking for. And he said, there's nothing out there. Point blank. That's what he said. There's nothing out there. I said, okay, w what can we do about getting on possibly the list for this coming year? He said, there's nothing out there. That's what he sent back to me. Very important. I mean, blunt. Okay, maybe he just don't want to sell a vehicle. So I, I called around. I called the dealership, but I, I told him, I said, Look, I just want who I am, just who I'm with. We're trying to find a vehicle on state contract. And they said, well, You need to talk to his name is Rod. He said, But I tell you, there's nothing out there. Said, okay, well, there's two people told me that. So then I just decided, I said, You know what? I'm going to call around and just ask the dealership, tell them who we're with, tell them we're, you know, school -based. And see what kind of prices they can give us. So, and this is this is one. This, actually, this uh, particular vehicle right here was not on state. They didn't have a price listed on state contract. Um, the ne very next one that we're going to look at, they did have one. We're off about seven thousand dollars, I think. But the problem is, is Lord, they tell me you can't. And I asked myself, can we get on a waiting list to get on this year? He said, you're too late. Too late. So there's nothing they're going to sell you at the state contract. Well, and I think that's pretty much the deal. I think that's kind of the deal. So, and then I got talking to um, Washington County, because they just recently bought one, and they just said that they got the same, the same information. There was nothing out there. So they just decided to go through their, they went through their local dealership right there in Plymouth. And they, and they bought a, a big from them. From what I was told was more money than what we got this from here. I, I don't know. I, it's none of my business. I didn't, but he just told me that they didn't feel like they got the best deal. Um, we flip to your next one, if you don't mind, please. Oh, you already have. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, this is the Chevrolet Traverse. Um, it actually seats eight, as you can tell in the picture. It's a, and this is actually the color of this vehicle. It's going to be, it is white. Um, it actually is a bigger vehicle. It seats more. And my thinking on that was also, if you didn't have to see they you could fold in six down and you got more storage room. So it's, it's a little more feasible. But anyway, it's six eight. Um, as you can tell, it's a it's an SUV. The only thing I didn't like about it was the mile per gallon. It it ain't quite as good as the, the other one. But this has got a V6 engine in it, which is gonna give you a little more power, it's gonna burn a little more fuel, unfortunately. Um, and they, they do not hold this vehicle with a with a four cylinder. So and automatic transmission. There we go again. I didn't think we needed the extension. Uh, I'd like to see. Well, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to go there. Um, total price is 32016 And like I say, that does not include the taxes and your taxes. Um, either one of them would be a very good vehicle. I mean, for, for the money. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my recommendation is that I, 
I looked at it like if I was going to spend my money and, and we talked around. I talked to Andy and we kind of discussed it. I think the bigger vision would be better for us. If, even if we, we don't have eight people just going to a conference, we still got more room in it. It's a little more comfortable, especially if you had to ride for, for three, four, five, five hours, whatever. So uh, my recommendation is to be to buy the Traverse. Um, like I said, it's more passionate room. I think the district can get more use out of it. You won't be limited as far as how many can ride if you, if you needed your space. Dealerships to be contact. Um, I kind of, yeah, it's a bunch. Yeah, it's a bunch. Uh, I can tell you, I called, uh, I got to Fort Chevrolet, Elizabeth City, Lee Chevrolet in Washington, Belt Chevrolet in Greenville, Donald Bullock Chevrolet in Raleigh, I mean, not Raleigh, uh, Rocky Mountain, and then I contacted Capital Chevrolet in, in Raleigh. That's the one that's supposed to have the state contract pricing. I couldn't get any, couldn't get any headway with, with those. So, so what I'd like to say, I had, I, I, I did send, I sent um, to Miss Dunbar yesterday. She, she was asking about it, and I sent her a question. So, I mean, they're already in there. And but I did, I, what I do is I just pick the the lesser of all of them to present to y'all. Um, how, how often is the current vehicle used? How many miles per month is it? Right now, not many because of the engine issue. That, I mean, so the staff drive the personal vehicles and we reimburse for mileage? Yes, sir. How much, do you know how much we reimburse the average month for mileage? I do not. How do, do you know that? We haven't been doing a lot of professional development. Last couple of years because of COVID, so I couldn't tell you it's not as much as you know I would expect we were planning for next year. It's where um, like allocating like three thousand dollars per department and school for you know, statewide professional development, and the rate is 65 and a half cents per mile for personal vehicles. With the purchase of this vehicle, are we going to change our policy of how we do that and require our staff to drive this vehicle? Like, I don't know how that works. Like, do we have a procedure? If the state has procedure for okay. travel, if, okay, you, so if there is a, a school car available and you don't use it, you don't get full reimbursement, you get a reduced amount. Like 35 cents, I think, is what it is. I have to look at the rate, but I think that's what it is um, around that. But it's, you don't get the full amount if you elect your idea. And then the other question is please help us refresh our memory. This was budgeted with the ESSER funds, correct? Not, not ESSER, but AO. Capital outlay. Capital outlay, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Was this already budgeted? Did it capitalize? It's, point, it's going to be, if we had a like objective of what we were going to, when we um, did the request for the county, you know, we kind of put like a little proposed budget of how we're going to spend 100000 um, that was capital money, and that was included in this for a vehicle. So this is this is proposed for the next budget here? Yes, for next budget. For that next. we haven't done yet. No. We haven't got a first check yet. I would say that we would use that first check with other with other available. Are there any more questions for Mr. Murphy? I don't know if it would stay there. I would like to keep it there so I can keep my own and make sure that the fuel levels and stuff can check in like they need to be. Because I don't, I think naturally, it's a new vehicle, but yeah, it shouldn't burn oil, but you need to get into anything possible. They'd have I, to do I, it through travel tracker. That's correct. It'd have to be requested through travel tracker. So we request this. Yes. So you go through travel tracker just like a mini bus or activity bus. 
<laughs> is there a proposal um, to potentially surplus the current vehicle? I would like to, and I, and I kind of need some guidance on it. Um, is that how you want to do it? I'm just asking about the potential. Yes, yes. We need you. <laughs> so there can be a potential sale there. Too. Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't count on a whole lot of that. I wouldn't either. But we, and just so that we've got about four vehicles that we really need to get rid of. Are they in use? No. Well, we should be here, but no. Yeah. They may get, they might get they better sit there and stuff. <laughs> Would you be able to, would, would that, is that something you could come back with next month? Yes. Recommendations on surplus of the vehicle? Well, <laughs> I don't know who to go to to ask. The way we done it where I came from, uh, with it being a county vehicle, you can't do a surplus like a state surplus because it's not state, state cars or state vehicles. The way we done it where I came from is we done like a sealed bid. You have to. Well, you don't have to declare surplus. Right. Yeah, and then yeah, you just do it. We have to run surplus. Right, right. Maybe great to get that. They don't have to get all the state surplus yard or anything like that. We did that with, I don't remember what it was, but the other two I talked to you about. It was several. I'm all right. Right. Yeah, we did seal this and then have a bit of an interest. That's right. I can see that. So the recommendation is from the BOE to approve the purchase of a safe and reliable vehicle for district staff. And Mr. Murphy is presenting the um, transverse, the 2023 transverse. Um, I don't know the pleasure of the board. My question is how long is this quoted for? Can we get budget finalized prior to the how long will they hold this close? Yeah. I do not, but I can find out for you tomorrow first thing. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I'd like to budget my thoughts before I can see. Because right now we're working on a continuing resolution. Is that correct? Right for the state. We do have fund balance. In our level, that's where it has to come from. Our fund board. So we need to use fund balance, have cash in the bank. Let's see. Um, if you look at that balance sheet, you can see how much cash we have there. Over three hundred thousand. And then as the appropriation comes in, we're going to replenish that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Mr. Scripture? For funding. No, not really, but it's local funds, it's yes. county appropriation, which we still don't have a past budget. No, we do not. So Ms. Gibbs has made a motion to approve the recommendation for um, the purchase. Ms. Gibbs, would you like to um listen to your motion or I don't know. Just, okay, so I'll open it up for discussion. Okay, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Ms. Wilson. Um, with the traverse, mm -hmm. or either one of them, did right. they say how long it would take to get it? What does that look like? They got them on your. And you recommend how many? I mean, how many times can we take you know large groups of people to conferences? And there's the mileage is what, like you said, what worries me is there's a substantial fuel increase in that. Right. You know, we take when we go to the office out, we take anybody on the table, right? Two. Do you have three? Two. Two or three for, for me? Like, depends on the conference. Yeah. I have it, you know, like she said, we have it really. It's in a lot of people here. Oh, How many books you bring? Exactly. How many books you bring? Like, two weeks ago. Well, yeah, that, that was a lot. <laughs> But they were coming from different areas too, though. 
got some coming from Manio. Like I'm driving from Edgecombe. She's driving from Greenville. Like he so how does that work with reimbursement if we're not all meeting at one place and we're all traveling from our own? If they're if they're not carpooling, everybody that um, gets approval to go gets approved to be reimbursed for mileage. I had a party. But when it says fee if it would be reduced. If it was through, if we had the company be able to then go to a travel tracker and then if I could bill it to a program, like say it's like something for CTE, we had summer conference for CTE coming up and we had four, three, four, and they all get together and I could charge the, the CTE program and get reimbursed for the cost of using county our school clock. That's how that works. <laughs> And you get reimbursed for mileage for that too. And yeah, I just charge it to the I charge it to the program itself. Yeah. So right on. So that's a washing flat. So my question is, is there a need for the larger? I mean, do we have a need for larger vehicle or would the five capacity? That's what I'm unclear about. And you chose it because you figured. I, I was thinking, you know, bigger groups or more comfortable. And, you know, I don't know. What's I mean, I really don't know because I mean, it's like she said, we really haven't been going to a lot of conferences right. and doing, doing a lot. What's the problem? Well, oh, go ahead. Um, let me let me weigh in because Audrey's not here. <laughs> So I'll speak. I'll speak for Audrey and and myself and um, oh, Dr. Hodges. Is she there? She's here. She's hot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> because a lot of this came about when I saw Audrey struggling with the with the district car. Um, what we what some of our staff members do is they drive in. You know, they can drive into Terrell and then put into Travel Tracker to take the car. To their various meetings. So the curriculum, our, our curriculum directors, myself, um, and our instructional leadership team that's participated in NELA, which is a large group, if they were to meet in Terrell and then put all of their luggage in the truck in the traverse and go to Greenville, that would be more helpful to them than what's currently happening. Uh, with, with them all going there sporadically and being reimbursed. Audrey's monthly meetings, my monthly meetings, and um, some of the other meetings, we have to go as far as into Raleigh. Like, for example, tomorrow she'll have to go to SAS um, on, in Cary. So, and there's a group going. There's about three or four of them that are going, including Dr. Worrell. So if they were already in the district, they could pile up, put their luggage in there and disperse to their the hotel that they're going to be staying at. So there are times where there are large groups traveling to different parts of the state. The CTE conference is in Winston-Salem. That's a large group. But at this time, how many people are going to the CTE conference? Um, I think we've got two. You have two, but... In, in reality, that whole department really needs to be going to the CTE uh, conference um, for training and support. So, it, and, and our meetings are in Williamston, and I think India's meetings are in Williamston as well. So we we're just all over the place, so to speak. But you have mileage covered in your contract, correct? Yes. But there are meetings too that they sometimes we go together and in, in you know I, I don't intend to drive your county car. <laughs> Just so you know, I don't that's not my intention. And I understand occasionally we'll have large groups. Is that the exception or is that more more the rule? I mean, you know, we just said there's two going to the CPE conference. And if they drove themselves, the CTE would pay for that. Yeah, I I don't think it's it matters. It's just that you can get more people in the in an eight passenger versus a five passenger. I, it, 
I mean, it really doesn't matter. They've got to have a reliable, safe car um, to travel. And oh, I agree. We do not need to use that other car. That was in bad shape six years ago. It, it, I'm sure it has not gotten better. It, it hasn't aged well. So I, I agree with that. But once you put that back seat up and you put eight, eight people in it, how much room did you then have for luggage? I mean, you think about it, eight, eight people going somewhere overnight, how much luggage is that going to take? And when you put that third seat up, you got about a foot behind it. I mean, you, I mean you're not, you, it's just not going to work. I mean, you, you ain't all eight people with luggage in that deal. Y'all laugh now, but I, 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 I know. Let's, 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 let's you take it one this way. You better go and take the mini bus. Let's you put in some kind of compression thing. It ain't working. It's like you got lost Wow. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's why I was wondering how many went in a conference. Was it so I, I, I don't I mean, you're looking at a 7,000. I think it's about a 7,000 price difference. That's why I asked that question. Plus, plus, what about safety? What have the better safety or traverse or the uh, equinox? I know I could not tell you on the safety record. Don't crash. That's what happened. That's what they are. I, I, I think we need one, but I'm just not sure if you're available. I think, you know, long run is going to cost us more. Yeah. Is there any other? So, Ms. Janey, have, Ms. Gibbs has a motion on the floor to approve the recommendations um, for the Chevy Traverse. Is there a um, any other discussion? Safety rating. Oh, okay. We'll wait. We're looking up safety rating. What's the difference in gas mileage? I'm sorry, actually, I'm sorry. Sixteen twenty-seven with the reverse and twenty-six to thirty-one. About about ten miles. Yeah. Oh, see, that's cute. Okay. You just wait your safety, Mr. Okay. 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 Uh, hey, so that's a different scale. <laughs> that didn't help. I mean, you guys, you can do it and call this little bit. If you need to chop it down and chop it down. Okay, we'll call for a vote then. Mr. Scripture, how do you vote for the the motion on the floor by Ms. Gibbs is to purchase the Chevy Traverse? How do you vote, Mr. No, ma'am. No. How do you vote, Ms. Silverman? Oh, I don't know. Oh, God. Okay. 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 Ms. Gibbs, how do you vote? Ms. <laughs> <laughs> Dunbar, how do you vote? Oh. Well, to me, it doesn't make sense if, it, if the, the Equinox is cheaper on gas and safer. Like, I, I'm with you. I'm going to make those for the motion, but I've got two that are holding. So we have two no's and one yes. We're waiting on the other two. One is, did it say one, two, four, and one's a five? And that what it just said? Because the traverse is a four and the equinox is a five. How do you work? You vote this, Liverman? No. Okay. How do you vote this number? Ms. Dunbar votes no. The motion does not pass. Is there another motion? I'll make a motion. We a motion we purchase the equinox. Mr. Scripture has made a motion to purchase the equinox. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote this scripture? Yes. How do you vote this Silverman? Yes. How do you vote this gives? 
Have you driven so far? Yes. And I drove yes. The motion to purchase a vehicle for the Board of Education has not been approved. Thank you. Next up is our capital projects and facilities update. First up is Mr. Doug um, Patrick with the summer work plan. <laughs> Um, just to update you on a few things we've been working on this summer. Uh, uh, one thing we started on as soon as school got out was uh, over in the high school main building. Um, Bruce got in there and started removing the old uh, radiators that we don't use anymore uh, for safety and appearance reasons. And as he was doing that, he uh, you know cleaned up the walls, filling in the holes or whatever damage may have occurred from removing the radiators. And he also uh, repainted uh, some classrooms. He just painted the walls with a radiator along. Some of them painted the whole classroom, just depending on what it needed. Uh, as far as replacing the doors, we've uh, identified some mainly some outside doors that are, uh, needed replacement. So we're currently working on that now. Um, um, right now, he's just moving as needed from building to building, uh, primarily uh, painting uh, ceiling tiles, uh, floor tiles. We had some termite damage at elementary school in one classroom. He's been working on that. So wherever he's needed, whatever he's needed for. Um, Andre continues with the groundskeeping um, when it's not raining. Um, as far as the contractor projects we've got going on, we, uh, we finally were able to start with some of this access control we've been talking about for so long. Um, they came and worked for about three days. They're probably halfway through that project now. Um, what they've done is, uh, I think it was four doors at the high school and middle school campus they've added access control to. Uh, I believe it's going to end up being about six doors, all outside doors at elementary school. Um, so they're Hopefully they'll finish that up pretty soon. Um, as far as the athletic uh, field lighting project, um, currently or for now waiting on uh, Terracon and the engineers from Mosey Architects are uh, working together to um, uh, come together on the design agreement. And once they get that, I can get back with the electrical contractor to uh, begin work. Um, the wood shop. Um, uh, we've been working on everything's done in there. Uh, we're just waiting on the uh, hopefully one more quote to come into the dust collection system. Uh, once we get that, um, hopefully uh, that uh, portion of the project will start also. Um, Mr. Graff is here. We're going to update you on the CT learning lab progress. Um, custodians are doing their normal summer routine, uh, mainly waxing floors, uh, deep, deep cleaning, whatever's needed. They're, um, they're also moving building to building, um, trying to work along with everybody else, everything else that's going on. Um, carpet cleaning, I did have a contractor here um, last week that looked at all the carpet we have in this building, the elementary school. And a little bit at the high school. Um, he's going to give me an estimate or a quote to um, uh, clean the carpet, basically. I haven't got that yet, but I'm expecting it any time now. So we may do that or we may not. Um, anything else? Yep. Okay, so here's some future projects. It's large projects. We've been talking about them also for a while. Uh, Mr. Brath is working with a uh, engineer uh, looking at our list station over at elementary school. That's the what pumps the sewer out of that building into the town. Um, so they're working on the design for that right now. Um, we also have been looking at uh, a couple of our uh, large HVAC, HVAC systems. Uh, one at the high school campus that does the media center cafeteria. Um, we're just in the initial stages of that. Uh, planning. 
Also, the other one is that the <coughs> elementary school uh, does the fifth grade hall, the office area, and then like the gym hallway. Um, so that's just some of the larger projects that we're looking at for the future. Anything else? That's it. Any questions? You sort of said before that some time is really the Carol's busiest time. Just curious with the contractor for the park bed, is that something we normally do? Is there a reason that we reached out for a contractor? Um, that is not something we've done since I've been here. Um, I was contacted. Uh, by Ms. Williams to meet this gentleman here, and I met him, and I carried him around and showed him where all that carpet was at. So we talked about that a little bit. I'm just waiting to get his set. Do we have the, um, I don't know, so maybe I'll do, do we even have the equipment to clean the park ourselves, or what is that? Um, we, we have one. It's, Rather old. I'm fairly sure it's not on the level of what he has. Where where is this contract from? The beach. Sea breeze. Sea breeze. Off the country. So we're just waiting for a customer to send that to you. We put out a formal bid for carpet cleaning and we also um, we'll look to see whether or not our current contractor for our custodial supplies will do our deep cleaning um, for our custodians as part of the model work that we had discussed previously. It is normal practice to put out bids for, you know, large projects for districts. And so we'll be implementing a formal bid process that we're required to do to see if any companies in the area um, our want to participate in bidding for our projects and our needs for our capital projects. It's my understanding that the uh, extractor is not up to par for the deep carpet cleaning that's needed. And also to think about the safety and healthy uh, well-being of our students in terms of allergens being located in our buildings. Um, so it was recommended that we do that as part of our ESSA projects. Recommended by who? For our ESSER projects for the air quality recommendations that we have in our grant for deep cleaning. By who? By us, by our, our district staff, our federal programs directors at, at the state level, according to the stipulations for ESSER. And also we talked about this with uh, Mr. Barath and with, with Doug, as well as concerned about the cleanliness of our campuses for the high school and the middle school. And the elementary school has a number of carpets that also haven't been deep cleaned in a number of years. So have we tested for allergens or we just believe that they might be there? We know that they're there because we have several students that have allergens. And we have several um, medical diagnoses of our students that suffer from allergy and asthma. So it is our it, it is up to us to do our due diligence and making sure annually that our buildings are deep clean. We also had an issue over at our central office where our ducts had not been cleaned and we had to change our air filters and it was caked with a lot of uh, dust as well. So we've got to get on some type of progress monitoring schedule to ensure that these things are happening throughout the year so that it doesn't warrant us to, you know, get in these type of situations for deep cleaning contracts, but it hasn't been done. I know since the pandemic, we haven't had any deep, deep cleaning that has happened, which is part of our grant stipulations that we are to work on our air quality. Basically. That will be part of our air quality and cleanliness. We have, we have already put out the bid for this? Yes, the bid is posted on our website. So the contractor that came to the district came to see how much um, carpet we had and to develop a proposal to put in a formal bid. We have not signed a contract with that particular company. Mr. Scripture, as a point of reference, I don't remember the exact date of the work session, but this was deep cleaning. Michael Rosebar was presented when we went over the um correct me when we the work session when we went over the facility plan, correct? 
Define deep cleaning. It was okay. close. Yeah. What does that mean? Dr. Roseburg, I don't know how you and Mr. Patrick define deep cleaning. Well, I think Mr. Patrick should be the one to describe it. That's within his scope of work of what um, are needed for our buildings to be deep clean and what schools schools do for deep cleaning in the summer on a progress monitoring schedule. So, getting back to the air quality test, it, it's been a few years. We have had some air quality tests in some of our classrooms and uh, a teacher or somebody maybe having some trouble. As far as the as far as this contract I'm talking about with Shane was looking at coffee, that's all we need to know is coffee deal deal anything. So that's all he can be on. He can't or won't be on the deep cleaning. But I did reach out to Safel's uh salesman one that we get our cleaning products from. He has a company uh, where he brings in workers that do deep cleaning. My yeah. definition of deep cleaning is that from the air ducts to the floor, the, everything. Air ducts and all that stuff. Uh, well, maybe not the duct work itself, but the grills. But, and I asked him to give me a uh, uh, price. I, uh, I didn't really know exactly what to go on, but I gave him a list of the buildings, the square footage, and I told him to give me a price to go from the ceiling to the floor. That's waxing floors, cleaning the carpet, windows, blinds, walls, everything. So, so do our custodians not do you anymore? Or? Um, yeah, I, I, they, they spend a lot of their time waxing floors. We normally do that, right? Well, that right? Mr. Mr. Patrick just said that they're spending their time mopping yeah, and waxing is, the floors. It takes the majority of their time in the summer of waxing. Okay, thanks a little bit. I mean, but if we're, if we're going to address air quality, I mean, at some point we've got to address what's in those air ducts. Like, <clears throat> Because you, you clean the carpet, but if you don't get what's in the air cup, you just blow it right back in the carpet. You know, so I, I mean, that's why I think we're we're just piecemeal of what we're going to do. I mean, we're going to really, you know, address <laughs> air quality. You know, somebody said we got to take samples out of those air ducts, have that, figure out what's out. You know, not just, you know, put that bit of the carpet clean. I don't, I don't think that's going to solve that if there's truly an air quality problem. So did your man get back to you with a price? He did. Oh, he did? Yes. The second guy? Yes. Uh, I got, actually, I got it yesterday. Um, 45000 That's to do, that was to do this building, all the buildings on the high school campus, except for the tech trailer and the bus garage and the elementary school. That they could work. Okay. Yeah. The bus the bus 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 the trailer. <laughs> and the van <band> goes. <laughs> so, like the little square one that's front. Yeah. Why not that? Okay. Thank you. Is there any other questions for Mr. Patrick? Will you share that? Quote with us, please. Yes. Thank you for the summer planning update. Thank you, Doug. Yes, thank you. Next up is um, Mr. Patrick and Mr. Morat for the CHS Learning Lab. Well, the only thing to update on that is what you've seen out there, and that's a big pile of dirt and sand. and. As we talked about, now we've got to let gravity do its work for the 60 day requirements to load the site. The good news is, uh, you now have an idea of where the floor of that building is going to be. It's going to be up about five foot high. So uh, that gives you a sense of scale out there uh, of what's to come. So 
as soon as uh, we get past the 60 day loading, that's when they'll start excavating for the uh, footings and starting the process there. So they're chopping at the bit to get out there. So as as is everybody. And that is the is mid September. Uh, yes. Sorry, I had to do quick math in my head there. So um, and then again with the schedule uh, that was presented, that everything triggers after that 60 days because you really can't do anything until then. Uh, we think in talking with ARHS and that there is an opportunity to make up some time in that schedule, but we're not at a point right now where we can actually with confidence say that it can happen because there's too much variable with the weather uh, and what delays that might cause here in the fall and winter. So we'll know more about that uh, once we get to that time uh, and can begin that phase. Thank you, Ms. Borat. Were you on site when they did the work? To fill it? Yeah. Uh, no, I just passed by in the evening uh, once they're in it. Okay. Um, Terracon, your material testing company was out there. The whole uh, time? No, yep, to verify the number of loads that came as well as the compaction rates and to make sure that the lifts were done in accordance. Okay. When A.R. Chester was here, he said he would when they were there doing that, he would have all the materials um, piled up so that they could all be covered and got out of the weather. Is that taken care of? All the material is sitting out there now exposed to the weather, the building. Or oh, the frame the, components. Yes. Yeah, um, just the concern wasn't with the major frame items because those are timed up and ready. It was the smaller boxes of items made sense to move those to. Uh, well, he said it was going to put it all together because I expressed concern about the frame components sitting there with water standing on. Then I, I misunderstood that because uh, what I was conveying to him was he had small component boxes out of square found and walk away. Did, did I not ask that question at the last board meeting? He said he would have it. He would have it moved when he had equipment on site. I do. He also said it will start the next week. How many weeks did he start? Well, I think the same thing was that two, two weeks or two weeks in a day or something like that. So the contractor was able to mobilize out there with the lunch. I'll follow up with uh, Mr. Chesson about that. I apologize for misunderstanding your statement. So now we've got you know, 60 days of our building sitting there to get rained on. And it's rained just about every day for the last uh, 10 days. Are there any other questions, questions about the CHS Learning Lab project? Okay. Next, Mr. Morath of the Exemption for Design Services presentation, I believe. Yes. Um, and one of the projects that Mr. Patrick referenced was a lip station <laughs> over at the elementary school, and that uh, that needs to be rehabilitated. I've uh, been working with Mr. Patrick and reaching out to uh, multiple engineers throughout the region to just talk about it and contractors to confirm the timeline because again this project is uh, uh, planned to have had the SO3 uh, funding applied to it that expires next year 2024 September uh, so the work would be done next summer uh, at the end of the school to have it replaced so we are doing some work with making sure Pumps and components and items would be readily available so that work can commence them. Uh, there's the act known as the Mini Brooks Act uh, for uh, using a professional services for design, engineering, surveying, et cetera. And what that is, is that it's a qualification based selection process requirement. Um, so, like you did years ago. Uh, for the architect for the learning lab. He went through and published and announced a qualification request selection process. Design teams responded, you reviewed and interviewed and selected the team, and then you discussed the team. So that's a requirement that's uh, federal and in the state of North Carolina. So in certain cases though, the board and other government bodies can exempt themselves from it, if those services are expected to be less than $50,000 uh, to not 
have to go through this entire process. This rehabilitation project is uh, not grand in scope. It's, it's it's costly, yes, but the engineering fees were well below fifty thousand dollars. So the recommendation is that board, uh, and this has to be something done in writing, so your minutes have to reflect this uh, from the board. And I think the language is all. Uh, it's the right now. He went too far. Right now. That's the proposal. Let me go ahead and read it because I don't see it up there for you. Um, it's referencing North Carolina General Statute 143-64.32. And I'll make sure that all of this is in there. Oh, I'm sorry, the bottom of the right there. Uh, designer exemption, the bottom right. Oh, thank you. And I don't have to read. Um, so, 143-64.31 is the required uh, qualification-based selection. Point 32 is the opportunity for local governments and the course of education to exempt from it for services when they're going to be less than $50,000, and which this uh, uh, engineering services most definitely will be. And so, in the end, the recommendation would be for the board to consider a motion to exempt the district from the requirements of General Statute 143-64.31 under the provisions of General Statute 143-64.32 by declaring that the design services will be less than $50,000 and that the meeting minutes include the motion with the results of the vote. Any questions regarding? Who, uh, who yeah. selected uh, Thomas Engineer? Well, this is a multi-step process right now. Right now is the first action, which is the exemption. Then the next one uh, action we'll talk about would be uh, the uh, Thomas Engineer, potentially using that. But we're agreeing to sole source this or allow you to choose this design no, by that, or, by or that vote. vote. The board would have to approve any designer that's being used. This just exempts you from the field out and solicit qualification based selection process. Who, who, who would then decide whether these engineers were qualified? The board would do it. The board would. <laughs> This is a multi-step motion. Yes, it is. This is just the first one, just the board's exempting from the qualification-based process because the fees are expected to be below $50,000, and that's a standalone only by itself. Next, we can, we'll can we be talking about an engineer, and the board can decide yes to the engineer, no to the engineer. That's a separate <laughs> In this exception, it it has an engineer listed. How much listed right in the middle of that? How much engineering PA to perform engineering service? It says right in the middle of this. Again, Right, right in the middle. Yes, I'm sorry, it's blurry there. Who, my who chose Thomas Engineering? So, back to my original question. Um, the Thomas Engineering, uh, I reached out to multiple engineering companies, uh, Greenville, uh, New Bern, uh, even out south of the Raleigh region, who have done uh, the station rehabilitation projects. And they were, let's see, um, the uh, Thomas Engineering is the one. LKC Engineering, south of the Raleigh area, and the one in Greenville. Um, I hope that's I'm drawing a blank. I won't email that. I'll have to go into my notes and find that. Um, I'm drawing a blank, but in Greenville. Um, spoke to the one in Greenville numerous times about the project, the scope, if they have the capacity to take on such a project so that it would be completed 
uh, in August by August of 2024. Um, they did not respond. Uh, I spoke to them, reached out, spoke to them again, and they pretty much said they don't believe they have the capacity to do such a project at this time. I uh, spoke to LKC Engineering. LKC Engineering also did municipality work here for Toral County. They've done some, I think, of the water sewer infrastructure uh, around the county in various locations. So they had familiarity with the region. Uh, again, they didn't believe they had the capacity to do this project being so far from their office. Uh, when I spoke to Thomas a uh, uh, few occasions, he came by and wanted to look at it first. He met with Mr. Patrick and surveyed and looked at the lift station and then follow up conversations where that he could do the work and have it uh, done in a timely manner. So the project can be completed August of 2024. And also, he is so he was the only, one, he's he's the the only one that came to the project. And he's been um, business for 40 years doing municipality development work for water, sewer, infrastructure, etc. Right. Okay. So the Associates are RPK, RPGME. Trying to remember, but I'm, anywhere, I don't want to misspeak on that. So. That's that was the middle part is information you're not voting on, Thomas. What you're voting on is the motion, which is the exception. The Thomas being in there is information for the board. The motion does um, uh, say in there anything that the board's approving, Thomas. The information from Thomas was provided to inform the board of who they are and how they meet the, uh, the uh, needs of the project as a demonstration. Not that you're approving Thomas in this motion. And why are there in? Why would you not put the yeah, so information in to inform the board of uh, companies, uh, a company that does this work and their expertise in it and years of service of doing similar type of work? Is there a motion from the floor about accepting the district requirements of the one year old statute of local 3 So, yeah. Ms. Gibbs has made a um, motion to the board. Is there a motion to accept the district requirements of NCGS 143 under the provision of the one year old statute? 143-64.32 by declaring that the sun services will be less than 50,000 that the meeting is not included in our bid. Right. So, is there any discussion? Well, I understand this is to better have a make it easier for sole source. Um, even if we're exempt, so I would like to follow up with what that total price would be. Certain community and public knowledge. So, correct me in the wrong, Mr. Brown. The first motion, if we agree to do this, the next motion will be to accept a proposal from a company that's less than $50,000. That'll be a separate discussion, okay. and a separate motion, not tied to this. The two separate independent. Does that answer your yes. question? Yes. Okay. Well, and again, what it says. We, you know, if this person is going to perform the service. That was a motion. But, that was a but the motion was not, that was not part of the motion. That was just, it made a motion for the last piece. That's all the matter. So your motion is, is just the bottom paragraph. Okay. Is there any other discussion about the motion? This is made a motion. I'm going to reference the screen and the minutes notes for all the general statutes. That would be in again. How do you vote? <laughs> How do you vote this yes. structure? Yes. How do you vote this, Lumberman? Yes. 
How do you vote with Gibbs? How do you vote with Dunbar? And I vote yes. I the board has for the confusion. <laughs> the board has voted to exempt us from the requirement <clears throat> we're allowed. To. Now, Mr. Barath, with your next. Okay. So the next one is as we started the discussion about uh, the engineering company. And so, like I said, I did reach out to three companies uh, to try to talk to them about doing the project, uh, see if, again, there's a time restriction that's critical um, with the project. And so they need to be able to know with confidence they can accomplish it. Uh, last thing that Ms. Simmons and anybody here wants to deal with is an unfinished project that as if money is no longer available for them, you have to find other capital funds to finish. It. So, uh, in talking to those three companies, and for the reasons I listed, uh, Greenville uh, company there I spoke with, uh, close proximity wise, uh, knowledgeable about the region as well, being there, uh, and the issues I had uh, with getting them to respond, and after numerous attempts and discussions, they eventually uh, declined to do the project and feel they had the capacity to take it on. Uh, LKC, because uh, they had done work in the county in the past on uh, the water systems and events and sewer systems, they had familiarity with the region and the people and the needs here. Uh, however, uh, the distance, uh, things three and a half to four hours uh, for this project, uh, they felt they could not do uh, with confidence and, and timeliness. And uh, Mr. Thomas, although he's in Newburn, he is uh, very uh, familiar with the region, uh, does work throughout the uh, east and northeast and had familiarity with such systems as this. And that uh, he did come out to look at it and be able to put together a comprehensive proposal. So after reaching out to these three companies, uh, Mr. Thomas being the response the responsible one uh, to provide a quote for services uh, that is uh, outlined in his proposal, as well as what we'll be doing throughout, and also uh, as introduction to the board with his cover letter since the board does not know him and his company, uh, his years of expertise with some sample projects that were listed there and that the uh, recommendations for the board to consider the award uh, uh, the design for the station to Thomas uh, group for the three and again, at which the funds for the design services, as well as the construction of the rehabilitation of the project will be paid through the SO3 Green funds through pay 181, I think budget code and Simmons have uh, targeted. If there are any questions. So the question I have is this amount for design services, the 33,650, was this accounted for budget proposals that y'all the estimates y'all gave us at the time. This was included in that estimate. And it's, it's within the budget limits that we look at. So the knowledge of the systems, yes. And there was no other engineering firm in Eastern North Carolina that was interested in this other than this that I was able to identify and look at. I did speak with a uh, company, um, ELJ. Um, they do a lot of lift station and infrastructure work in the region uh, about who else out here does rehabilitation work at lift stations. And those were pretty much consistent with the ones and ones I understand to. Are we going to have the same problem when it comes time to hire a contractor that we can't find a contractor that's willing to, you know, we've only got one engineer that's even willing to design it? Um, the, I know one contractor, Will, did it. Um, and I spoke to, he's uh, down um, by uh, 
Wilmington area south here. Uh, and then they said he would have been there at Cana. I have not yet reached out because I don't have any information to share with contractors yet, but typically what I would do is as the science wrapping up, just have the engineer myself reach out to potential bidders to let them know one, this is coming up and kind of front talk it so they can get interested in exploring it. <laughs> And in, in this bid, there's $10,800 for construction, negotiation, site visit, shop drawings, and, and all of that stuff. Isn't that what you do? Um, don't you do the site I, visit? I will, be, all that site stuff. I will be assisting that kind of whoever is part of this, his design and uh, his execution of the contrast for the engineers <laughs> and as it's with CTE built that I could be available to provide assisted oversight of it to help the additional eyes and ears in the business, <coughs> business interest of the same state being addressed. And, and who do you report that to? Is that to Doug or to the uh, superintendent, Dr. Rosenthal? Uh, reports to the superintendent. And at times, as it now reports to the board. Are there any other questions for Mr. Brown? Just the pleasure of the board in comparing the recommendation that are before us. Design services. Ms. Gibson made a recommend, has made a motion that on um, board approve the award of design services for the rehabilitation of the sewer bus station at Terrell Elementary School in the amount of $33,750. Is there any discussion? I, I think it's irresponsible. I know it's extra money, but we can still public money that we have not considered anybody else. And I think we're paying for uh, construction oversight points. Uh, <laughs> Any other discussion? Motion on the floor to approve the award of design services for the rehabilitation of the sewer lift station at TES in the amount of $33,650. How do you go to Mr. Structure? Okay. Oh, wait, hold on a second. So, <clears throat> in the so we might be paying for this twice. If we're paying Mr. Barat to do construction oversight and the engineer, we're not paying for this twice. I'm not currently contracted for the roadside uh, project for construction. Merely uh, contracted to help provide services to identify uh, and help get projects underway. <laughs> So you're, you're not going to be the construction manager for that? At the current time, I do not have a contract that says that. The only thing we're paying for you is to do the, the building there. The learning, the learning building for that construction oversight and with this and some other small projects to work with staff, gotcha. and such as the uh, uh, HVAC replacement uh, that Armstrong is doing at the schools, uh, such as with this project and to um, help with facilitating that process to uh, bring quotes and proposals to the board that are in compliance with North Carolina general statutes and board policies. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Does that yeah. answer questions? Yeah, absolutely. It does. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. The motion to look forward from Ms. Gibbs is recommend the board that the motion to approve the award of design services for the real build station with sewer bus station at Terrell Elementary School in the amount of $33,650. How do you go, Mr. Strich? Absolutely. Is there is there going to be a construction match? Yes. How do you go, Ms. Lillard? I'm afraid. I think I have this on the Okay. So it's not, it's not, not, not provided in the board. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm voting in for the design okay. 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 In the stumble, and I vote yes. So it has passed the motion for design services. Has passed. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Black. Okay. So the next item on our agenda is the recreation. And this is a review of the MOA that we recently we already seen through our work sessions and it's the MOU with the Terrell County government and the Board of Education for the implementation and administration of the recreation program. Sorry. Motion to approve the agreement between Terrell for memorandum of agreement for Terrell County recreation. Ms. Dumbar has made a motion to approve the interview of Terrell County and the Terrell County Department of Education for implementation and administration of the recreation program. Is there any discussion? I think we discussed this before. <laughs> Hearing no discussion, how do you vote, Mr. Scripture? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Lillard? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Gibbs? Yes. How do you vote, Ms. Dumbar? Yes. And I vote yes. Remember, the MOU is approved by the board. For the Thank you. At this time, um, the board would like to go into closed session um, where our journey, we will make a motion to go into closed session. We'll adjourn our regular meeting, but we'll take a five minute break. Because everybody's back through the room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was looking at everybody's <laughs> So, Dr. Rose.